My name is Jane Maigua. I am a managing director with Exotic EPZ Limited. It's a private company that is based in Nairobi. Uh, so Exotic is a processor and exporter of macadamia nuts. Uh, basically, we are licensed to source nuts from farmers. We also buy from aggregators. And we bring those nuts to our factory in Nairobi, uh, where uh, processing happens, the drying and processing into kernels, and we export. So we are licensed as processors and exporters of macadamia nuts. Uh, currently, we have been exporting to Europe mainly, but we had begun a diversification plan to get to other continents. So we have been employing, if I could talk about employment, uh, 20 full-time staff and about 85 to 100 seasonal workers uh, because it's uh, basically a seasonal crop. Well, in terms of uh, COVID, so the breakout uh, came uh, open in, in March, around early March, and uh, basically uh, it came as a big uh, shock to our business, uh, as many businesses have experienced. Uh, first on top of our minds was the safety and health of our employees. Uh, but definitely following the government directives, uh, our government reacted quite quickly and there was uh, uh, directives that uh, people stay at home and uh, basically the whole idea about social distancing and uh, we quickly shut down at the beginning so as to evaluate uh, what our plan was going to be. Uh, but as I said, it was important that we think about our staff, safety and health basically because we have a manual uh, process uh, that we follow where staff uh, do the sorting work quite in close proximity. So it was important for us to think how do we reorganize that uh, in view of their safety and health and ours as well. Uh, but also the reality began to dawn when uh, immediately orders from customers were suspended we basically started out the year 2020 having negotiated uh, a, a substantial order as far as we're concerned what supply about 20 containers within 2020 and our first container full load was to go out in march and we were getting that ready already uh, since january and it was ready by end of february but come march we were informed that we shouldn't ship basically because there was lockout uh, periods and uh, or, or advices in the in, in the countries where we're going to export and so we were informed that the the buyers because we sell to resellers and they informed us the resellers had slowed down uh in their orders and therefore they wanted to review uh how we were going to supply so uh in a nutshell we didn't have revenues between january and april as a result and the orders that now were there was suspended so we figured we needed to think about a plan how we were going to operate uh first and foremost how we we're going to conserve cash now that orders were not confirmed but also be more aggressive to try and get the orders confirmed uh, so that we are producing based on confirmed orders uh, now we are in april we only have one order that was confirmed for december we are working very aggressively to see whether we can have other uh, other orders confirmed for the period before december now what the market informs us is that uh, it's not until after, say, July, depending on how the crisis uh, eases up or, or how things act differently in the economies. It's not until July that we can be able to uh, see farm orders coming in. And what we know and what we are told is macadamia nuts are really not part of essential uh, food products. You know, most of uh, consumers all over the world are looking at more primary primary. Um, uh, uh, food, basic staple foods, uh, before they get to, to nuts and the kind of superfoods that we are producing. So in that case, we have been if, uh, affected in the sense that we had to stop processing immediately now that the orders were not there. And therefore, obviously, our seasonal staff went, uh, had to leave um, uh, work in terms of that they didn't have work to do, which is a big concern for us because then they have families, definitely. But in terms of uh, cash flow, we had to manage that as well. But we do have 20 full-time staff who we have continued to pay uh, as we, we have continued to evaluate the strategy uh, of how we adapt the situation or how we respond to the situation going around the world. 
uh, in terms of the markets. So one of the things that uh, that we have been doing is, is to think how can we, for example, enter into the domestic market with our product. Uh, but of course, that uh, is, is a process that will take a little bit of time. That started earlier, actually. The, the interesting thing is we had already begun a diversification plan where we, we were looking to diversify markets by uh, going to other continents uh, to get customers, but also to uh, in terms of uh, entering the local market with roasted nuts. And that's one of the area PFS has been supporting us, developing the, the roasting line uh, so that we can enter into particularly uh, domestic markets initially. So that's something we are already working on. Uh, but besides that, we are consistently knocking doors of our customers to see whether they are ready to take up orders or when they might be able to, to be ready. Uh, and we have seen some, some doors beginning to open, including uh, supplying, uh, for instance, US, um, and, and we hope that can work. So in, in view of that the markets are beginning to open up, what have we done? So we, we, we realize that this is season when uh, it's peak season for, for nuts harvesting in Kenya. And seasons come and go, so and the prices are really favorable at uh, at the farm gates. So we decided uh, strategically to start uh, restart buying nuts uh, from the farmers, uh, take advantage of sort of quite low prices, uh, dry them, but we are not processing, so that we, we we don't affect the shelf life. You know, once you process them, the, the, the nuts already the shelf life begins to 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 move, and, and 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 we didn't want to affect the shelf life without having farm orders. So we are buying nuts, we are drying them. But again, uh, it happens that we had plans to restructure uh, our production unit. We had plans before COVID to automate our processes. We had already imported color sorters uh, and we were looking to, to, to install them. So we have decided strategically to install the, the color sorters and to just fully automate the system as part of our plan, which obviously even before COVID, we were going to close down for say four weeks. So we are taking advantage of this season that we are close to reorganize the production line, fully automate, include a few other equipments that are needed to ensure that our production capacity will, will operate efficiently. So that's one of the things we are doing. The other thing, of course, we are doing is to keep very close communications with our staff, our core staff. Um, we have been working with them to continue setting up systems. We're already, you know, rolling with that. We were, we were going under, we we're going through ISO 9001, which is a quality management system. So building those systems up, the documentation, uh, as much as those can work from home and some of them go to the office. Um, and we are having constant work along that. We, there are a number of uh, ISO certifications we're working on already. Uh, including occupational safety and health. So upskilling the staff, training the staff and getting the systems going, uh, as well as analyzing you know, where are the constraints in our value chains, how can we become more efficient and having actions along that that could be done once we are up and running. So one of the challenges that uh, now we face is, uh, is, of course, it's a crisis. We have had to think how do we manage cash Cash flow. So one of the areas that uh, we hope and we are seeking help, you know, is, is cash flow management within a crisis. How, how do we do that? Where do we put brakes, uh, hand brakes? Where do we, you know, what initiatives we take that will help us move forward? And we know we are already taking some of those, but uh, it's a constant uh, review on cash, cash management. How do we conserve cash? How do we manage investors relations? Uh, I should have mentioned that uh, before COVID, we were already in uh, conversations with uh, with uh, long-term investors. We we were discussing convertible notes, and that's one of the things we have now gone in to sign agreements for, because this is what was going to help us in the expansion plans we have uh, for a, a convertible note for five years. That that, that was mainly capex uh, investment. So. We also have other financiers that have financed us. So how do we manage those relations to ensure that uh, they are sustained and that everybody understands each other and that the business is uh, not hurt in terms of growing interest uh, without production? So this is this is what has been happening at uh, Exotic in the last uh, uh, two or three months. 
Uh, we are very optimistic. Of course, we have to remain sane as leaders. So we're working on uh, stress management and how to uh, manage ourselves and how to manage the staff and communicate to them hope and, and, and plans and uh, because we shall need them uh, really uh, post-COVID.